Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm so glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So we've been going through our EKG coding reference guide online, now available. And now we're in our uh, um, point where we're looking at part four, this area here, and we're looking at axis deviation. In this lecture, we're going to look at something called right superior axis. You may have heard it also as northwest axis, no man's land, uh, or extreme access deviation. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Now, if you don't have access to our reference guide, all you have to do is put this link into your search bar. You'll enter your email address, click that submit button. You'll check your email. And from your email, you'll get a link that you'll be able to access here, okay? And then you'll see these drop down uh, menus where you can then see where we're at, okay? So we went through part one already, so you can go back and listen to all those lectures. We'll start to upload those lectures within the uh, actual reference guide. That way you can just click on them uh, easily where we, in part one, we looked at general features, P wave abnormalities such as atrial enlargement, so left and right atrial enlargement, by atrial enlargement. We looked at rhythms in part two where we looked at sinus, atrial, junctional, and ventricular. And then in part three, looked at different types of conduction blocks. And now uh, we are here in part four. So let's get started. So right superior axis, okay, so what is does this mean? So first off, a few things just to go over. When we talk about axis, we are referring to ventricular axis, okay? On the EKG, you may see it as an R, so it'll say maybe P, R, T, okay? And then you'll have three numbers, maybe it'll be 3, 43, 22, okay? And what that refers to on the EKG is this P, is a three, the P wave axis, three degrees, okay? The R wave axis is 43 degrees, and the T wave axis is 22. Now, the one we focus on in these lectures are is this R wave, this 43, which would be normal in this case. But So just if you're looking at your EKG, you may notice it looking like that. So that's what we're pretty much looking at and learning how to actually find it ourselves. So this is the R, R axis or QRS axis, and this is in the frontal plane. So the frontal plane includes the limb leads. Okay, so just some basics. Limb leads on our standard EKGs are these ones here. Okay, these ones, so this is limb leads in the frontal plane. The horizontal plane would be these precordial leads. All right, so that's the horizontal. But so because we're focusing on finding the ventricular axis in the frontal plane, we will focus on these limb leads here. So one, two, three, AVR, AVL, and AVF are those limb leads. Now, what we're finding is right superior axis. So what does that mean? So if we draw our quadrant system out, the right superior axis would be this region here. Okay, so if something lies in that region is considered a right superior axis. So let's just go over our labeling because this is important. So this is where zero degrees is. This is positive 90 degrees. This is plus or minus 180 degrees. And this is negative 90 degrees. When we talk about axis, if we don't mention otherwise, we're using adults as our patients in the axis when we're defining it. So this would be normal axis between negative 30 degrees so notice going this way is negative, okay, and then positive 110 degrees, okay. This, so all this region here we consider normal in our adult patients, okay. The other thing is this is considered right axis deviation, this quadrant here, all right. And if you're just beginning, you can pretty much consider this whole region here right axis deviation, this normal. And up here is what we consider left axis deviation. Okay, again, if you're just beginning, you can consider this whole thing left axis deviation, so it's just a four quadrant, but generally, uh, more uh, specifically, this area up here is considered that leftward axis deviation. This could actually be normal in our adult patients as patients get older. Okay, so and then lastly, this is that right superior axis up in this region here. Okay, so up here is right superior axis or you may hear it as northwest axis. Why is that? Well, notice this would be north, this is west, so everything in here is northwest axis. Right superior, because it's on the right side, 
and up. So that's where that right superior axis. You may also hear it as extreme axis deviation. So this region here is all what we consider extreme axis in no man's land because there's not really much that comes there. Now, ventricular tachycardia is one thing that we can see there and can be helpful in differentiating it from other wide complex arrhythmias. So now let's find out how we determine and find that uh, an axis lands there. So there's a few leads I want you to do, I want you to know. So let's just uh, clear this up because it's there's already so much writing. So we'll clear this up and do this again. All right, and the big thing we want to know is where are the leads placed on that quadrant system? So I want you to get familiar with drawing that quadrant system out because it becomes very helpful. Okay, so this again is zero degrees. This is positive 90 degrees, plus or minus 180 degrees, depending on which way you go, and negative 90 degrees. Now there are leads that we have here in the frontal plane we're looking at. This is lead one sitting at zero degrees, the positive end. AVF sits down here, it's positive end at positive 90 degrees. This is where I want you to start when you're finding axis. When you're just beginning, you use lead one and lead AVF. Okay, and what you want to do is look at those leads and look at the uh, the QRS complexes because that's what we're finding. We're finding that R, the QRS ventricular axis in these limb leads. So what you want to do is look at lead one. So here's lead one, and notice we have these two QRS axes or QRS complexes. Okay, and are they mostly positive or negative? Is what you have to ask yourself now. Okay, so how would you know that? Well, you would look and draw a baseline here. Okay, is this mostly positive or mostly negative? Okay, and it's almost what we call isoelectric, meaning that it's the same positive and same negative, but it is slightly negative. Okay, so it's slightly negative in, in this case. So where would that fall? Okay, if we're saying it's pretty much mostly isoelectric, but maybe negative. Well, here's lead one, okay, in this position. Isoelectric, if something is isoelectric, it means it falls pretty much on this line, okay, pretty much perpendicular to it, okay, if it was positive, it'd be more on this side, if it was negative, it'd be more on this side, okay, so because it's mostly negative, it's going to be more over here, okay, so we have to use other leads to help determine the axis. Let's look at AVF, so AVF is down here, and notice in AVF, you have these complexes here, okay, and there's one there as well, in which you have a complex that looks like this. All right, and is this mostly positive or negative? So if we draw our line here, most of it's below the baseline, so we consider it negative. So if it's negative, it's going to go away. This is the positive end of AVF. That means the axis is away from AVF, okay? And it's mostly on this side here based on lead one. Okay, but well, let's use some other leads to confirm this. So let's look at lead two. Where does lead two sit? Lead two actually sits here. And that is at positive 60 degrees. And notice that lead two is nearly almost all negative. It goes up slightly and looks like that. And these are these complexes here. So if we draw our baseline through there, Notice most of it's below baseline, mostly negative, almost all of it, meaning it's going to go away from the positive end of lead two, meaning that our axis likely lies somewhere in this region. Okay. The other thing you could look at is lead AVL. Okay. Lead AVL would be here. All right. If you're determining, is it above or below? So AVL is here, and this is mostly positive. Okay. So it's going to be if you were to draw it, it's going to be mostly going towards this direction. So what you would end up doing is you can add these all up and see where it ends up. Okay. Now, the, another lead that's helpful is lead AVR. Where does AVR sit? AVR is here. Okay. AVR is there in the positive end. So is AVR mostly positive or negative in these complexes? Well, if you look here, you have like a complex that looks like this. All right. Draw your baseline it's mostly positive. So again, going mostly towards AVR. So this axis uh, was actually around 260, so positive 260, which means you would go all the way like this, okay, in this positive direction to positive 260, okay? Or if you went in the other direction, it would be negative, okay? 
I wish you would do negative 100. Okay, so about right here. So the axis is somewhere in this region here. And that's exactly what we consider a right superior axis. Now, we don't often find too many narrow complex uh, rhythms that wind up as a right superior axis, but certainly if a patient's had a previous infarct in a region um, that was opposite to it, you may see now most of the electrical impulses heading in that direction. Okay, so notice in this one, we actually use multiple leads to determine it. Okay, this is a little more complicated one, but worth trying to use to figure out and uh, see where we fit. So this is a right superior axis, and the main things, they're not always this difficult, okay? Uh, usually we could use a few leads to find it out. And again, when you start off, you can use lead one, lead AVF, consider this quadrant normal, this quadrant right axis deviation, this quadrant left axis deviation, and you can consider this that right superior axis, okay? And pretty much an easy one, would be to see if this is positive, you'd want to see a negative complex in lead one, all right, as well as a negative complex in AVF, all right? And that's pretty much what we see here. So if it was negative opposite of lead one, it would go in this direction away from it, okay? And if this is the positive end of AVF and it's we're saying it's negative, it would go away from that and therefore the axis would lie somewhere here. Okay, so you're looking for negative in one and negative in AVF, all right? And we do see that here if you were to measure it up closely. So hopefully that makes sense. Again, this is right superior axis, the axis lying between that positive 80 and positive 270, which would be here, okay? So this region here, or negative 180 and negative 180, or negative 90 and negative 180, depending on which way you go. Okay, so a few ways to name it, northwest axis we saw, extreme axis deviation or no man's land. And the most common one you want to remember this with is with ventricular tachycardia. That is actually quite helpful when you see it going in direction to make that in differentiating between other uh, wide complex tachycardias. All right, so right superior axis. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available, so again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here so you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so and that's more on youtube there's another hundred more than 100 about 200 videos that are available with the course so those are separate videos and this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter okay so completely separate from what you're getting online for free okay these are um, course material that comes with it so notice that you have a book Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket, EKG reference.
Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there. Very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who is the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic, in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course. You'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay. You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay. And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself um, 25% off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right. Have a great day.